Hi guys, in this video we're going to be answering the question, what is polarisation? We're then going to look at polarising power and polarisability before we summarise. OK, so let's get started. If you've watched our Born Harbour Cycle videos, then you'll have been introduced to the concept that theoretical lattice enthalpy will sometimes differ from the experimental lattice enthalpy. The difference in the theoretical prediction versus the experimental value is because the bonds are not purely ionic, which is what the theory assumes. They have a somewhat covalent character due to polarisation. So what do we mean by this? In ionic bonding, we have one positive ion, which is the cation, and one negative ion, which is the anion. These are completely separate from each other, and their electron orbits do not overlap. The opposite charges are attracted to each other, and this is how the bonding works. In a perfectly covalent bond, we have the electrons in the bond shed equally between the two atoms, rather than, in the case of ionic bonding, Originally, we would have had an electron with the cation, which was removed, leaving it with a positive charge, and this electron would have been given to the negative ion, leaving it with the negative charge. In covalent, they're shared. Polarisation is a process that occurs in ionic bonding, where the cation, the positive ion, attracts electrons in the negative ion. This distorts the electron density in the anion, the negative one, towards the positive ion. The anion is said to be polarised. Polarising power is how we refer to the ability of the positive ion, the cation, to attract electrons from the negative ion towards itself. There are various factors that will affect the polarising power. For example, a cation with a large charge density will have a large polarising power. The charge density is calculated from the charge of the cation divided by the surface area, but this is never a calculation you need to specifically carry out. You just need to know that if we have a particular type of iron, for example, this could be sodium 1 plus, which is quite a large iron with one positive charge, it's going to have low polarising power. Whereas if we compare this to magnesium 2 plus, this is a much smaller ion with a higher charge, which means that the charge density, the charge divided by the size, is going to be larger and it's going to have a higher polarising power. So if we just said the magnesium is going to have greater polarising power than the sodium because it's smaller and more charged. And this means that magnesium compounds will have more covalent character than sodium compounds, even if they contain the same anion. We can see an example of this difference in covalent character if we look at how sodium and magnesium form compounds with chlorine. We'll use chlorine for both, or chloride ions, because keeping the anion constant allows us to compare differences in cation. So we've got the experimental lattice enthalpy, given in kilojoules per mole for both the compounds, and for sodium it's minus 780 kilojoules per mole, and for magnesium it's minus 2526. Now if we compare this to the theoretical value we'd get, if we assume that all of the bonding is completely ionic, then we can compare the difference in these numbers. With the sodium, which has a much lower polarising power, the difference is only 0.13%, which is very, very small. These two agree to within a good accuracy. With the magnesium chloride, however, the percentage difference is 7.92, which shows us that there's far more covalent character in the bonds in magnesium chloride to explain the difference between experimental and theoretical lattice enthalpies. The fact that the experimental lattice enthalpy for magnesium is much greater than the theoretical prediction means that more energy is given out when the bonds are formed, so we form significantly stronger bond bonds than expected with the magnesium compounds. The polarisability, on the other hand, is the anion's equivalent to 
the polarising power of the cation. It's the ease with which the anion can be polarised. A large anion is easier to polarise, and same is the case if it has a high charge. These have the greatest polarisability because the electrons are furthest away from the central nucleus positive charge. With the atoms with high polarisability, we can see that the electron density is most easily distorted by positive cations, giving more covalent character in bonds. So, for example, iodide ions have a greater polarisability than fluoride ions. And we can see this because there will be a greater discrepancy between the theoretical and the experimental lattice enthalpy calculations. And as we expect, fluoride ions, which are smaller, have a 4.1% difference when they're in a compound with silver, whereas when iodide ions are in a compound with silver, we have a 12.5% difference between the experimental and the theoretical predictions for lattice enthalpy. That's all for this video, guys, so let's summarise what we've learnt. In ionic structures, polarisation means that bonds are not purely ionic, they have some covalent character. And the covalent character of the bonds is determined by the polarising power of the cation and the polarisability of the anion. A small cation with a high charge will have the greatest polarising power, and a large anion with a high charge will have the greatest polarisability. Thanks very much for watching. In the next part of this video, we're going to tackle some exam style questions on this topic. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.